Greetings, everybody. Welcome to the Agile Austin Leader SIG uh, edition, April 5th of 2024. And I will just do a brief, brief intro here, and then we'll get straight into it with Pamela. And so thanks for joining us today. And I always tell people, if you're concerned about being on Zoom, you know, you can put yourself, you can turn, turn off your camera, change your name, and nobody will even know you were ever here. Okay? Uh, do stay on mute if you're not speaking. And the Leader SIG is part of the larger Agile Austin umbrella. 501c nonprofit organization around since 2007. We connect, we collaborate, we grow. And we tend to have a very fun time while doing that too, okay? Uh, I just wanted to start with the introductions. Max Akesi, I've lived in Austin since 2001. I am an Austinite, yes. Uh, I was speaking with Pamela before a lot of you join. I've come a long way to end up in Austin, I've spent time, I'm like in Italy, perciò parlo italiano, mi piace il cibo italiano, etc., etc. But we'll do today sing in English, not in Italian, okay? And I uh, grew up in Nigeria, but I'm an Austinite, been here for 23 years. I am, I am the president of the Agile Austin organization, been so for three years. I've been involved with the organization pretty much since when I started the SIG, the SIG here, the special interest group in 2010. So we are 14 years and going with this special interest group where we discuss, discuss all things related to leading an agile transformation. It's called the Leaders SIG, and we talk about various ways that you can help lead an agile transformation. And we meet the first Friday of every month, and we usually have a guest speaker or some panelists. It's topic focused and Please be as interactive as possible. And as, as I said, feel free to put in the chat where you're joining from. We've got uh, uh, KP, KP from Dripping Springs. Yes, and not too far from here in Austin. And Pamela, you're joining from where? Feel San Jose. Free to put that, San Jose. Feel free to put that in the chat. Let's see where folks are joining from. So... Uh, I would tell everybody, go to our website. You will find all the information you need. I'm putting it in the chat of membership, sponsorship. We have a very informative site. Go there. There are a lot of good, good offerings. And we have over 150 plus Agile Austin Pay members. And we have all discounts and perks and share a lot of content and et cetera there. And shout out to our two sponsors. Agile Velocity has been our sponsor from the very start, always there, and do, does a lot of Agile boutique consulting. And Ad Meliora is doing the same thing. So shout out to them, and I put them in the chat also. For folks that might not be aware, we have various special interest groups. This leaders one is the one of the many, okay? We've got the Agile Coaching one, Agile, uh, Agile Skill. We have a book club. There are not many Agile Austin organizations that have a, a book club for years. It's awesome. They meet and talk about various books twice a month and all that. We've got the newest and greatest AI product SIG because, you know, you've got to have something AI. You just have to these days, right? And so do we, okay? We're starting up the AI pro pro product SIG at the end of this month or next month. The leaders one and the lean combine. I tell everybody, just sign up on our meetup group, subscribe there, and you will receive all the communications, the notifications of all our e events. We have about 7,300 people that are subscribed to the meetup so it's just great that people get value in subscribing we just had our keep austin agile conference on march 7th and it was a blast it was a blast for anybody that was there or you know uh joined virtually or in person and everything thank you we had bob gale and his keynote speaker 12 speakers that did a phenomenal job we were hanging out to the point that at happy hour we had to ask people to leave because you know at some point you don't have to go home 
but you got to leave. And it was that much fun. Right. Thanks. And shout out to everybody. We, we, as a 501c, we have board members. I'm the president. I just tell people anytime you want to communicate with us, tell us how great a job we're doing, whatever board at agileaustin.org. Shoot us an email. Tell us. And if anybody wants to volunteer, I always put that, that info in the chat. Also, we're always looking for volunteers as we're a volunteer-based organization. And you'll get more information on volunteer opportunities and et cetera on, on the site. We're going to have Pamela here soon that's going to talk to us about create focus with key agile measures of success. I'll let Pamela do her introductions and all that. Spiel. I'm so looking forward to it because we really have to get better in measuring the success, measuring the value that we are delivering. It's, it's not enough to just say, well, we're going to focus on psychological safety, create empowered teams and everything. Let's measure and show the actual value that we're delivering. I think this is great to hear about today. And on May 3rd, we're going to have uh, Erin Randall come talk to us about her own experience and her success in diversifying beyond the agile role she was very much I'm like a, an agilist and she's been able to take a lot of those at uh, those agile skill sets to roles that are well beyond the the agile coaching role the scrum master roles and various other things training and teaching on campuses etc cetera, etc cetera. so I think it's very key in this challenging job market that people leverage their agile skill sets in a variety of ways beyond the agile role and industry. So I will stop here and I will stop sharing. And then Pamela, I would like to introduce Pamela to our leader SIG to give her presentation on create focus with key agile measures of success. Welcome, Pamela. Yay. Thank you so much, Max. This is gonna be fun. Brava, brava, benissimo. All right, so let's get started. Um, let's see if this works, gets the right. Yes, I see it, and I see it in presentation mode. Okay, good. All good, right, good. so so let's go for it. Um, you've got some details to find me. Um, let's see, what have I been doing? Uh, most of my life, most of my career has been as a product manager. Um, had a few of my own companies for better or for worse. Uh, I'm a co-author of PM for Dummies, and I've done a lot of training for people over the years. Right now, I've been working um, through leading Agile, primarily doing business agility transformation. So whatever that, it always feels like there's more words than really needs to be there. We haven't really solidified what what words we need to use. Um, and the last couple of years worked with Ford, MTA, and, and Harley, among other, among other companies. So um so let's let's talk about um let's talk about metrics. And I kind of wanted to focus on a few things. Um, one is from here to there. So if you guys are doing transformations, it's from here to there. Where are they today and where should they be? Right. And what's the role of metrics in that? I'm going to talk a little bit about development team metrics that could help you get there and also some product metrics. Um, I'm going to focus more on the, there are going to be specific metrics that we talk about, which might be interesting, but also it's a generic discussion. And along the way, I have questions because I'd also like to understand what you'd like to get out of this and what your thoughts are and your experiences are. And then we just have a little bit up at the end, uh, depending on how much time uh, it takes on how do you get to a point of being able to create your own metrics? Because every situation is different. I can't give you a formula. I can give you ideas and I can give you a, a way to get there for yourself. All right. So let's talk about change and change is tough. So uh, let's anybody got some good war stories about trying to get an organization to move, okay? So, and and let's give me a little, uh, while you guys are thinking about that, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a context, okay? So, so the organization basically says, something's wrong, we gotta change it. And usually it's in one of two areas. One is the area of building the right things. That's my area of uh, 
product management. And then the other is the area of development, which is build it the right way, which is more the agile way. And more and more, it's not that people think I can fix development or I can fix product, but they need to be fixed together or it's not going to work. Right. You can have all the best will in the world saying, please deliver this product. And then the development team doesn't deliver or we can deliver great stuff. But we're being asked to 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 make garbage. All right. So anybody got a horror story they're willing to share either in chat or or just, you know, speak up. Of uh, of, of things they've experienced when they came into an organization and asked people to do things differently. Everybody's being quiet. Is there anything in chat there, Max? Or it's one of those days. Uh, one of no, those days. We, we have we <laughs> don't have anything in chat yet. Okay. Well, uh, we'll leave we'll leave that out there because we're gonna come back. We're gonna keep working on this, and at some point, people will will do it. So when we have when we're trying to change to deliver value, ultimately, right? Metrics are going to give us a couple of things. So they're going to support a learning feedback loop, right? I can do stuff, but I need to feed back to the organization that things are actually changing, right? And there's a couple of, of ways in which you can, you can do some metrics to do that. So one is assessments, right? So anybody here use assessments? You go, how do you guys think you're doing? And they go, yeah, we're doing great. And the other one is, and we'll see that in a little while, you can come and say, well, what'd you deliver? Like, what'd you get through, right? And that might be different. And it probably is lagging, right? I know how to do this, great, but I can't demonstrate it for a little while. Michael, you put yourself with the camera, so, and unmuted, so what do you got? Oh, very sorry, I didn't know. I was oh, no, I'm, I'm happy to have you, but I thought it was because you wanted to say something. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. My apologies. <laughs> no pressure there, Michael. <laughs> no okay. All right, Max, I knew you were going to dog me there. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Okay. <clears throat> so let's, let's dive into this a little bit further here. I want to talk a little bit about key terms. Okay, and so these are the ones that kind of rule my metrics world. And so even if you can't, don't wanna speak, that's okay, but if we could have some reactions here, who here knows the difference between a leading and a lagging indicator? Yeah, you got it, okay, right. Um, who here uses KPIs? Okay, who here uses OKRs? Anybody use OKRs? Some people do, some people don't. Okay. Who here knows a North Star metric that their teams use? Yeah. Okay. You got this. And who here knows, boo hiss, what a vanity metric is? That okay. I do not. Oh, okay. Well, we'll get that to that. I do not. <laughs> that you don't. Okay. So we'll talk about that. Here we go. All right. So just so you, we, we make sure we all under get this, leading Indicators help you predict the progress towards a goal or objective, and I'm going to use those interchangeably. Um, lagging is kind of like look driving through your rearview mirror. It's interesting, um, and we're we're going to give you examples of these, but but basically think about it. Um, KPIs. Now, this is how I use it, and and there's I'm sure a vast amount of people that are going to disagree with me on this one, but I find it easier to compare KPIs to I need to meet a performance level. I need to stay within bounds. But my OKRs are kind of like, how do I make a leap forward, right? How do I have an objective and then measure my progress towards the objective, right? So there's a big um, link here in OKRs with using leading indicators as part of your OKRs, if you haven't picked that one up already, all right? North Star are one to three metrics that guide company efforts. Some people have it, some people don't. It's always just really interesting for those companies that kind of say, we we want to have, we want to achieve whatever. Okay, the, the old one is, um, what was it, GE, which doesn't exist anymore, apparently. Um, they wanted to be number one or number two in every, in every market. Um, for those of you who are interested, I've got some articles on it. Um, it's an interesting exercise if you feel like your organization's very 
disorganized to figure out, get everybody kind of on the same page. Like, where are we going to go? But that's an entire workshop. We don't have time for that, but I just want you to keep that in terms of your, in the back of your mind. And now we get onto this idea of vanity metrics. And we'll talk about this. I'll show you, give you an example of it later on. Vanity metrics are, I have a net promoter score of whatever. Does it make a difference to your business? It could, but not necessarily, right? So how many of you are aware of some metrics which people track religiously made in some cases, but don't really affect where you're going? And, you know, it's, it's very, very common, right? If I have this, then I must have that. Not necessarily. Okay. And so we're going to, we're going to circle back on it. The majority of metrics that I've been exposed to feel like that. <laughs> so. Yeah. They make people <laughs> feel good, but do they, do they matter? Right. <laughs> do they really matter? I, I don't know. Um, all right. So I want to talk now about when we're going to deliver this value. All right, we in this feedback loop, right? Well, before we get to the feedback loop, let's talk about if you're going to ask at different levels of the organization, what are the kind of metrics, what are the categories of metrics people are looking at? Let's let's understand what the impact of that is. Um, I do not know how many times I have sat in a forecasting meeting um, or uh, what's revenue going to be next quarter meeting, next week, you know, whatever is going on. Um, what's my return on investment? What's the profit margin, right? I don't know if anybody's got some other ones, but most of the organizational metrics that people track, are they leading indicators or lagging indicators? They're lagging indicators. They told you where you were. They do not tell you where you're going to be. When we get down to the product, so I've had it here on the on the, the left, we're going to have the product where we're building the right things. And there we might talk about things like, and, and by the way, your, your mileage will vary. You're going to probably track different ones. But how many people are adopting our platform? How many people get through onboarding? How many people stay engaged and, and we retain them and they keep spending money through whatever it is we're doing? Anybody have any other ones that they like on the product side that they pay attention to? Max, there, you know, there's all these dollar things that people put out, and so amounts. So now they combine them to I mean, epics in Jira. They actually put a dollar amount, which you know, yes, it'd be nice to prioritize according to what dollar value it can bring in. But how could you possibly know, right? In some cases. It, but it, it's kind of yeah i think you're right and i i think and i'm so glad you brought up the epic thing because i remember <laughs> listening to you present and you said at the top you've got features then epics then using stories right you have a three and i love that three layer model love it Very except leading agile does it the other way around <laughs> so we have epics and features it doesn't matter it doesn't at the matter. top level right there should be a, a metric which tells you what the business change is going to be. It could be dollar. Yes. It could be percent change. It could be something, right? But if you don't have it, then how do you know you succeeded? How do you know you've done all the work on the dev side to actually deliver that value? You don't, mm -hmm. right? And I can tell you in transformations, that's getting to that number is possibly the hardest number to get to. Everybody's squirrely about it. Yeah. And Pamela, if I may just say one quick thing from all my experiences, sometimes I don't, I'm not even concerned about, are we measuring the right thing? I just want people to get that culture mindset of measuring things. Exactly. So that even if we're measuring something that is wrong, we're just consistently having to get in that mindset that after we deliver a story, it just doesn't go into a black hole and we never talk about it. Like there's actually a culture of going back and measuring, did this actually deliver what we predicted it would, right? So that we start to measure how good we are at doing that. So many times we just get things done and we go on to, to the next thing. And nobody ever talks about, wait, did we reduce the clicks that the end user does on that transaction from seven to three? Like we actually wanted to. to right because no, we know nobody. that when we reduce it we're going to get more people staying on you know the, there's going to be an a, an outcome 
right? Yeah. And so yeah. just that mindset of measuring and going back, because sometimes you've got to wait weeks, months after you deploy a feature to actually be able to measure things in like an accurate way. But sorry, I'll step off. I'll no, step no, 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 no. We're, we're, that's we're a pet absolutely peeve of in agreement on that one. And I, <laughs> and I think, you know, there's the role of the retrospective, but there's also like business value sessions that really yes. should review that. Yes. And and maybe I, I don't know if I was lucky or unlucky, but I had a CEO and I'll tell you anything I did was kind of like, okay, how many are you going to sell after X amount of time? <laughs> I'm giving you this money. What are you going to give me for it? Right. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was, it was funny. Cause one time I said, well, the first two months we're going to sell 50, we sold 49, you know, whatever it was, it didn't matter. But the fact that we tracked it was the important thing, Bingo. right? Mm -hmm. It's tracking and it's, it's getting people over that psychological fear of being tracked because i think that's what it really is it's fear yeah. right um on the development side you know how often do you actually complete something right have you delivered it you promised 20 did you get to 20 did you get to 18 you know like what what did you get to right whatever it is you should have some kind of measure and then you should also have a measure somewhere of you delivered something and it worked right I'm, I'm making these pretty generic to give you guys lots of leeway, uh, but, but yes. that's what it's got to be, right? Yes, but just on that, I think that on the development side, oh my goodness, we've done a phenomenal job of coming up with gazillion metrics like burn down charts, burn up, uh, story point uh, trend, like so many things there that you can pick and choose from a lot of things to track the development right oh here's here's let's let's leave that just for a moment because i want to come back to it which is I'll yes play. you can track a lot of metrics one of the reasons for bringing up north star and and again you can choose north star for the organization but you can also probably deliver it at a smaller level which yeah. is True. which are the two or three that really matter to our in our area right and if you can do that then you can start doing this which is you can start feeding it back Right. You can. And by the way, I'm just going to add this one because we already talked about it. Um, you can start feeding it back to the organization. We're doing this work. And by the way, as a result, this is the change we made. Right. And I ran a workshop yesterday for a bunch of people and they were proposing changes. And I almost felt like saying you're proposing these changes to a product. This was theoretical. It was interview prep. Right. So it was kind of fun. Um one person shows, I'll share this. One person shows Uber Eats and they came up with like choose plate. They had like a whole TM thing. They were awesome. <laughs> but anyway, but you always feel like, okay, well, what is the de Delta going to be? You, you're going to make this change. You're going to spend money. What are you going to get for it? Okay. So any, uh, I think we've kind of had a little bit of discussion of anything that you would add to it. Does anybody have any others that they would add to this list? Definitely having a Friday moment. <laughs> I think people are eating lunch. I really do. Okay, fine. <laughs> well, All feel right. free to chat if you're having lunch, folks. You don't have to turn <laughs> you, on the you're camera. Off. You're, you're you're... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's keep going. So, so let's talk about best practice. So first of all, I think we've mentioned it before, but if you have a metric, it better be connected to something else. It, it can't be um, like... I was reading one of those weird things on, on Reddit and it's just like, I need to like interact with my keyboard every X amount of time or I'm not working. Does that change the outcome? <laughs> like what a bullshit metric, <laughs> right? What a bullshit metric, okay? <laughs> Connect it to something that matters, okay? If you are collecting the data, you should be able to sit in around at a session and make a decision on the back of it. Otherwise, why are you collecting it? So it turns out, I think uh, there's probably like, you collect all this data and you use maybe 5% of it, right? So figure out what you need. And you probably want a little bit more. I mean, you know, I'm a spreadsheet junkie, junkie at times, right? Not junkie, jockey, I don't know. But, you know, I, I have fun with my spreadsheets, but, but maybe you don't need to collect it, you know, be very careful and use it to learn. Like, and I think that's where you t start moving away from the fear. If people really see that you come with a metric and go, oh, that's interesting, right? Because if a metric is there and you're ticking a box, you're gaming it, 
or you've got these bad antibiotics, it's not making a difference. So let's talk about a gaming. Anybody, uh, let's see, we were coaching some teams and there was this one team and they just like, they planned 20 story points and every time they delivered 20 story points and I knew they were lying. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew, like, how did no you one. Guess, how did you know that, Pamela? I'm like, maybe they really did deliver exactly 20 story points, like, no. for three years. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> no, I call, I call bull, you know what, right? It's just, it's just bull. They're, they're, they're not doing it. Okay. But again, all of these things, and I think for those of you who are part of transformations, it's really clear, like, um, you need to get leadership used to doing these things. They, too, are victims of metrics. Right. And they too have bad habits. Right. And so that's part of the your coaching, which is how do you do this? And and part of this discussion was actually delivered to a bunch of directors or subdirectors, whatever it was in that organization, because we needed to get them to really understand metrics. Right. Like the like how to how to use and not abuse metrics. So all right. I want to move on a little bit. Um I want to talk about delivery team metrics. And, and I'm going to talk on in, in this instance only about team productivity. By the way, how many of you have teams where whoever's the dev lead wants to track individual team metrics? Individuals' metrics. How many story points did they complete? Yeah. I've experienced that before. Yeah. Okay. How, how, how good is that? How, how, how does that make the team feel? <laughs> Sad. <laughs> it's really bad. Okay. But so Asha's here's... about to say something. Hold okay. On. Not really, though. It it is not. I mean, people are not offended by that in my team, at least. Okay. And I really wanted. I came for this to discuss this team metrics because we are trying different things, and uh, people want to. I can go a long time, but I don't want to interrupt you. That, but... That's fine. So so here's 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 what I'm aiming for, which is honest metrics. Okay, so so let's have a look at this, okay? So first of all, I'm talking about responsible target band. So over here, I have a couple. Um, so these are these are some questions, which is, do you have a well-defined backlog, right? Do you, do you actually have stuff in your backlog? Because teams that are not functioning well, their backlog's really low, or they just piled a whole bunch of junk in it and it's really high. So you can see that there's kind of like a good, a good band, and there's a terrible band and there's a, well, maybe we could change it band, right? Now, if someone hits and they go to 2.9, I don't care, right? It, it's not it's not worth talking about, right? But if consistently they have a lot of backlog or they have too small a backlog, that's a conversation because all of these things are opportunities for conversations with the team. Why are you getting this? Right? How are you working that gets you here? Okay. The other I'm one sorry, here I mean, is, are these stories? Are these? These are uh, oh. these are the, the backlog is in months, and the oh, velocity okay. variation yes. is from from sprint to sprint. Yes. I don't know why my sprint uh, you did before it had the percentage S. up or percentage down. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. In so months, if I yeah. deliver 21 month and I deliver 22, that's good. If I deliver 30 or I deliver 10, then what's going on with that variation? Because yeah. the more we see variation, then there's a systemic reason and we have to get into that systemic reason. We have to fix the system. So when we say we're going to deliver something, we deliver it. And it, it, this will show up later on as well. Okay. So Asha, you were talking about individual metrics, okay? Right. So what's what's going on with your individuals here? Talk about that. So we actually, I kind of track individual metrics to see their overall performance per se in sync. Are they doing good? And are they committing to this? If they're committing, are they keeping up their velocity? And that's what I track. Okay. It is not to say you're doing good or bad, or this is, a, it is not going to be rated up to their performance. It's more like, am I getting them the, am I getting best value out of them? And are they up to their potential? And what is their potential? That's what I'm looking at individual met metrics for and points. But then there are some teams that we want to do a team velocity, as you were talking about. But then the problem is the way they are doing in my, in this particular, the other company, sorry, team, 
is that the way the stories are written and pointed is very different. So I'm trying to understand what is the best way to do it as far as story pointing to be able to get be predictable. That's what the goal is to sure. be predictable and we don't have good numbers to say, are we, right. you know, predict right. to basically figure out predictability. That's right. what I'm trying to say. There are two teams doing differently. I prefer individuals so that I know at this point of time, if we're talking about teams predictability, I have everybody's velocity and I can predict it saying, okay, with these team members, I can deliver this particular feature in say 10 sprints. Okay. But on the other side, I cannot do that because if we have both the QA and the dev velocities together, I really don't know. And then yeah. get yeah. distributed okay. to different QA members, then it's hard. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that that in this organization was kind of like a bit old school. So we had the same issues in that, you know, a story wasn't was complete when it was coded and then it went to a different story, right? And we had to basically say no same story, right? Like it ain't done till it's done, right? Like getting that through people's head, that was tough. Mm -hmm. um, we also, interestingly, in this organization had people who have been around for a very long time and their productivity was very low. And so I think there's a big difference between what we share publicly. So if we're getting everybody together, I'm not going to share individual metrics. If I'm talking about the individuals, I might do that. Right. But at the team level, it's kind of like, what did we agree to? Right. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm not I think that's so the thing is, individual metrics is just with me. It doesn't yeah. are the end. It, it isn't public. public. Yeah, it's not public. But the point is, even the other way around, where we are saying a feature has every aspect of it, right? Dev, QA, bug fixes, all of that. Still, I don't have a clear picture of uh, predictability. So that's right. what I'm figuring yeah. out. Yeah, and, and we're trying to get there. So, yep, and, and it's tough. Okay. And and, and, and I, I put the story but before we go on, there yeah. was a question of clarification. I mean to yeah. Asha, uh, what exactly is your role in your team? Are you scrum master, dev manager, QA manager? Do you mind to just give context so that some people yeah. that are following? I'm engineering manager managing all pieces. And okay. I try act as a scrum master sometimes too. So yes. yeah. I do Got it. And so you wear I that hat also as scrum master, yeah. This is such an interesting topic that could be a whole session on we its can, own. We can spend hours. In, but <laughs> yes. I know we got to go on, but okay. yes, thank you for bringing that up, Asha. Thank you. <laughs> Let's keep going here. So here are some possible value metrics. And Asha, thank you so much for bringing up predictability because I think it's really important. Like how much throughput do you have? What do you have predictability, bugs? You know, there's all kinds of things. But I want to talk a little bit about value density. And my work's primarily been with IT organizations. So value density gets to be really important. So let me talk about what it is and what the benefits are and how you might calculate it. Um, it's really interesting because I was working with this one organization and they didn't want to make anything a requirement, but there are certain things they made a requirement and this one field was there. So let's talk about it. Um, sorry, I'm going to move ahead because I'm a little worried about running out of time. Max. So um Basically, in a value density mix, okay, and this is on the left, is we have low value density. So if you look at their backlog and what they're working on, they've got defects, they've got maintenance, task rework, whatever it is, and then they have a little bit of progress value, whatever that is, right? And on the right-hand side, if we actually are able to focus on not having defects at the beginning, right? Focus on addressing bugs. If we can change the way we work and we don't have so much maintenance testing, maybe we go to automated testing, right? All of a sudden, their ability to move forward faster gets easier, okay? So here we have 25% value on the left, but over on the right-hand side, we have 65%. Please do not measure it because it won't measure, but okay. <laughs> It's, but it's an interesting, but it's an interesting thing. But you can only really pick it up if you start tagging the stories. You have to tag the stories because otherwise you can't do the calculation. And so that was one of the requirements. And so how me, are you going to tag? Sorry, how are you going to tag? You just set it in Jira, and you say you have to complete this to put a story up. 
Oh, okay, okay. That's the way you're talking about tag. Okay, I got it. Oh, sorry, I don't, I, it, yes, you know, you're right. The tag, it's, 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 a, it's one of the fields they have to complete, right? It's, it's an adjustment to Jira. Okay. So, so let's talk about how this plays out in the real world. I'm going to use a couple of case studies. So, well, this is a case study, um, and it's a large organization that has trains. Okay. So, um, so this is a team we we're working with. And it was it was interesting because um, the person who was acting as Scrum Master product, I don't even know what the hell he was, seriously, and coder, he was doing everything, right? And basically, if you look here, every sprint, they committed to a lot of story points, and they regularly did not complete very many of them. And when we would talk to the team, we would say, this isn't good. And they'd say, oh, no, it's fine. And I'd be like, okay, so you're a developer. And you've asked me to complete all this stuff, to sign up to this stuff. And at the end of every two weeks, you're going to tell me how badly I did. Right? So they they literally had, I mean, they were really short on de developers. And the developers were leaving. They're like, screw this. We don't need it. Right. And there was like a, a rift between like the product side and the developer side because there was the lack of trust. And, you know, it was a relatively junior person and, and I dragged him aside. I do not know how many times <laughs> just for this one group. I created an entire workshop on psychological safety, <laughs> healthy teams. Um, <clears throat> I, I hope that he learned. Eventually, I think what he did was he started decreasing the amount of committed story points. Right. I think that's ultimately where they ended up. And I basically it pointed to the fact that they were not defining their their stories correctly, that he would assume that they knew things and then he would ding them for not knowing how to complete it. And I was like, well, that's on you. Makes you feel better that you get to check everything, but it sucks for your team. Well, that's that's also on the team for not communicating back that the stories are not clear to them also, right? It's, uh, it's but mostly it's, on him. I understand. <laughs> but, I, I know, would say there was a big issue of psychological safety. There you go. And, 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 the, and the, the, the leaders on the product side, they were, uh, you know, we talk about co-locating with Agile. They were literally on a different floor with all the management. Oh. They were given all the kudos. It was hard to push back on these guys. Yeah. And right? they dumped the work. They just they dumped, dumped the work. The work. Yeah. Absolutely dumped the work. So, so anyway, it was just interesting how we could use the metrics to start really um, identifying areas of gaps and figuring out how we were going to get this team to move towards a healthier position, right? And I, I can't honestly say that I think, you know, we resolved it 100%, but just identifying it and having people like go, light bulb, doop, this is what we need to do in a transformation. I think that's a key thing to do, so... Um, I want to talk about one more um, thing here. Okay, so let's go back to this value density thing that I talked about. Um, once these stories, and, and we're, we're talking about the epic feature thing, Max, it's kind of a joke, okay? But it was the middle level, wherever you are. For them, I think it was called epics, but for you, we call features. doesn't matter. Um, there, there was an effort to create um, a query tool. I think they were using Power BI. OK, and they basically went into Jira because let's face it, for most people on the business side, using Jira is a pain in the butt. Right. They don't they don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense to them. Right. And then they wanted to pull out key things. So one of the key things was what's the name of the, the top level item they were working on, the, the project, if you like. Um, what was the value? The value was we're going to increase revenue, decrease cost, whatever it was. Right. Like that should flow to the top. And the other thing was, and you could look at it literally team by team, which is how much time are you spending on things that are valuable and how much time are you spending on things that are maintenance, right? Now, if you're doing maintenance, typically you're not going to have a really large backlog, right? You, it, it shows up and you do it. But here you would have a team, for example, that had lots of value backlog, but they were only allocating a little bit of time to it because they had so much maintenance that they had to work through. Right. Um, and so, you know, I, I this isn't these aren't actual data, but I want you to really think about how you can get people to reexamine their expectations of IT, um, their focus on on what's really important. Is it really is there something that needs to change in the way they're doing maintenance so that they have more time? When is your project going to be done? Once we started doing this with some teams, 
the business people really backed off. They could see how slammed they were. That was a, so this was an interesting conversation with a lot of teams just having this data that we didn't have before. I don't know, Max, you're, you're, you're nodding your head. So. Oh my God, this is awesome, Pamela, because <laughs> it just, it just brings up all these memories and all these experiences. <laughs> and the one thing that really stands out is the fact of sometimes you really have to help people visualize this yeah. Yeah. because people are just, oh, these teams are working super hard. They're deploying every other day. This is great. But then the apps are crashing all the time. The customer experience is really poor. They have like way more defects than everybody else, but they're deploying every time. Look at all this code that they're cracking out. Look, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't, because it's based, are we based on delivering the most amount of code or delivering value? Value. What are we based on, right? And so when, when I'm speaking to all the people capturing metrics and all that, they have all these super awesome metrics down to code lines. And I'm like, how about like value delivered? metrics and everybody like it's crickets yeah they, they're like, scared of it they're scared of it because it means they have to be accountable right accountable yeah <laughs> and so i don't care how much everybody works sometimes i don't care individually who's doing what i care about value delivered and i've just had i'll just end with saying this has been my biggest challenge in all my agile transformation is getting people to focus on value delivered. I have just yeah. failed time and time again because people just talk um, about I had everything a, else. Hey, um, I had a quick follow-up question um, about the value. Like, do you uh, ask for a number for each, you know, for example, for a feature, do you say, hey, is this feature, or are you just looking at a count? Um, there were two ways to do it. And, you know, I, I honestly can't remember. And I, I honestly didn't want to pull up the exact screenshot of it. Right. Um, you could do it either way. And I think probably the more realistic way to do it was to pull up, uh, not a count, but, a but, a points value points. value. It, it, it really depends on the maturity of your team. If all you've got is count, then use count. If you've got them down where they can actually size, a feature an epic then then put that in no but, right, but that would just tell you the effort point. right with, with the story point only gives you effort it doesn't tell you the actual value from a customer or business perspective uh, and that's uh, generally the hard part right that's why i asked the question because right, whenever, right. whenever you ask a po to put a value number against any feature or story or epic they're like yeah whatever i'll just throw something right okay so so visual this is where it's part of the education right so first step is if you're going to work on something, which category is it in? Okay, so you need that. You also need them to somewhere in there say, if I do this effort and not at the story level, it has to be higher than that. What's the delta in terms of performance or revenue or wh what is your what is your product metric? So this is where I, I mentioned earlier that if you don't get your product people working with your uh, your development people, then they're delivering stuff, but what is the value, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a little complicated. Yeah. Yes. No, and, I mean, I agree. I think the KPIs and the OKRs that you called up before are a perfect example of being able to measure the value and stuff, right? People yeah. can put a reduce clicks on a transaction from seven to three. That's a very specific thing, right? From a KPI perspective. But Vishal, what we were just talking about is even just all the stories and story points that a team is doing, you have teams that are delivering 60% value story points. And then you have teams that are delivering only 10% value story points. And you know, then we have to ask the question, why are some teams only delivering 10% 10, 10 of their backlog is value. Okay, I want to, I want to, let's, let's, let's look at that a little bit, right? Because there are teams and their job is maintenance. Well, yeah. If they do about that's fixes, different. right? So, yeah, that's so different. what you find is like a team will, will sort of have their steady state of what their value is. And if it's 10% and that's okay, then that's fine, right? If that you look at the way they work and say, if we fix the way they work, they could actually deliver 30, that might be a big win, Bingo. right? And so it's, it's, 
it's first you to get the steady state as Asha was talking about, you need the predictability and then you need part two, which is how do you get better? Yes. Right. And that's a transformation part. Vishal? Yep. I mean, yep. Does that answer yeah. your question? Yeah, no, sounds good. I mean, I was, I, I guess getting a value number from product is, <laughs> is mind bending. So anything well, else is better. I think product, let's face it, you know, I mean, I've, I've had a product role forever and I remember sometimes thinking, well, how do I prove that what I did was valuable? You know, I did this product coaching thing and, and they're like, set the service up. And I'm like, well, how am I going to know I, I, I succeeded? And I basically created like a really short survey. And I said, did you learn this, 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 and this, what are you today? And then at the end, I was like, where are you now? And it was like, cool. They made progress. Right. But I had to look for the metrics that I would generate at the end. So what we are doing is after every feature <clears throat> delivery to the customer, we send out again a CSI report and say, okay, did we add any value to it? Is it, is it better? And their numbers tell us that we've added value. So that's one way of doing it. In part right. Of it. Yeah. But I think Max's point is you kind of want to get that, what's the win going to be before you start? Right. Like, right. It's the better. Yeah. Right. But <clears throat> to your point there, at least there's, an effort like the CSI or whatever you said, there's an effort to do a follow-up to understand, yeah. did we add value or not? That alone is priceless, right? Yes. I have failed so many times in trying yes. to implement <laughs> that practice of saying, let's go back after we've deployed something into production, it's live, and let's ask ourselves, did it add value? We, we get in, I've been in this scenario so many times that people just go on to the next thing go on to the next thing as fast as they can, right? Because there's so much work coming down the pipeline. We've committed to stuff on the roadmap. Just go on, go on, go right. on. The right? only way to do that is basically to have like a business, a biz ops review, right? right? You have to have your biz ops review. I guess you, we learned it the hard way that we had to do it, you know? You have to do it and it's it's ugly and it feels horrible and you always feel like you failed, right? You you lose more than you win, but the more you look at it, the better you get, right? That's that's the, that's the real win. All right, let, let me keep going because we haven't even hit products yet, but we are. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. it's, a, it's such a good okay, conversation. So... It's such a good conversation. <laughs> okay, good. So so here are some customer journey metrics. I love these little um, these little graphs, and I and I copy them from other places because I, I, graphically, I can't create this. All right, so basically, you have people who show up at the homepage, look at the product, they put it in the cart, they check out, they abandon the cart. You know, like, this is all, like, how do you get from seven and a half, 7.7 thousand people who actually show up on your homepage to 849 who actually pay you money, right? Like from a business point of view, your payoff is when someone goes to check out when they actually give you money. And I'm gonna make an assumption because there's all different kinds of success metrics. We're just gonna use money right now because it's easy, okay? So, if you have something like this, and so let me ask you this, how many of you folks use, I don't know, you have your, oh, you instrument your own products or you use Pendo, or Amplitude, like something. How many of you do something where you can actually get any of this data? Yeah, Asha, okay, cool. Right, okay. So this data, so here's, here's the other part of it. And it, I'll be honest with you, I copied it from the internet. So underneath they, they have lots of other things that they can track. So once you get this one data, then you can start like decomposing it, right? If you've got it. So, so those conversations start happening in this framework, all right? Because now you have a journey and now you have some discussions that you might want to have, okay? So you might want to look at it and just say, <clears throat> where do we lose most people, right? How could we change that, right? So that from a product perspective, that's the interesting question, all right? Is how do we improve any of this? Because if I can turn it from 849 to 2000, that's a huge win for the company. How do I do it, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I, I created this little customer journey, um, uh, which is you download the app, you open it, you create a login, you use it, you use it four times in a month, you buy something, right? I mean, I, I made it really, really easy, all right? When does the organization care? Like if you're talking to the C, what is it? CFO, when does he care? Somebody bought something. It's all he cares about. Somebody bought something, 
Okay. Now you, you're, you're on the product side and you actually start looking at their behavior and you find that there's hundred percent that download the app and then 80% open it and 50% create a login and blah, 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 blah. Right. You look at this, right. And you're sitting around as a team, you, you, your developers are sitting around going, what do we do next? Right. And you're going, okay, well, that's cool. But where can we, what's the focus? What's going to make, give us the biggest bang for the buck if we investigate it. So I put these numbers at random. So I'm asking you, you're sitting around that table. Where do you think your top one or two opportunities are to make a difference? I'll show you what you what? put yourself right back on mute. You said you unmuted and then you muted. Oh, sorry. I hated it. It was good. <laughs> I, was, I was about to say that the more number of times they use the app, right? That's what I would focus on because they like the app. They're trying to use the app. Purchasing is different. The outcome because... of using the app, right? Yes. <laughs> right. So, so then your question is, how do we communicate with people to convince them to open the app, right? Yep. Okay. Or maybe the login is too hard. You're losing 30%, right? They So again, there's a couple opportunities for you to go in and say, okay, let's figure this stuff out, right? All right. So I want to go back to my little case study of a large organization with trains and they had an app, okay? And the app basically did, it gave you a timetable. It told you when there was a problem with the train and it allowed you to buy a ticket. There's lots of other stuff, but you know, it's a basic app, right? Okay. And what they said was, we're winning because we have a great app store rating. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you this. What's a good name for this metric? Vanity. <laughs> it's a vanity <laughs> metric. <laughs> Now I, I know don't what care. vanity metric means. I know what it means. Oh, now you know. Now it's like, and and I swear, like every single meeting with this team, this would be hauled out. And I could, at the end, I wanted to, okay, I want to shoot them. You know, I'm not going to do that. But, you know, I was like, I'm tired of it. I, I kept saying, what's going on? Because what I want to see, I want to see this, right? I know they can't get better unless they do this, right? And all I got is this guy telling me 4.7. Okay. And when, when you actually ask the people on the business side, the people in the top office, what do they care about? What do they care? How many people bought a ticket? They want the revenue and the revenue was substantial, right? You increase that by five or 10%. You are golden boy. You are never losing your job in that organization, right? Mind you, it's a state organization. It'd be really hard for you to lose a job in that organization, but I just... <laughs> Don't hate on state jobs, Pamela. I know. I know. But, but, it, but it's interesting, you know, like, uh, you know, you, you will really make a difference if you, if you have the app store rating goes down, but you made twice as much money, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. So anyway, that's, that's, um, that's what I've got. Now I wanted to just give you one, any questions at this point, by the way. Okay. I wanted to just um, give you a little shot at creating your own metrics. And there's this format. I don't know how many of you people have heard about this, the gold question metric format. Anybody heard about this? Okay. So basically the idea is um, what is your goal? What are you trying to achieve? And, and again, goal, objective, whatever it is, right? I want to increase sales, whatever. I want to have more people you know, like 10% more people order their tickets through the app, whatever it is. Okay, so the questions you need to answer in order to make that happen, go back to a certain extent to that customer journey, right? Which is where do we, you know, how many people are opening it, the app? How many people are um, logging in? How many people are able to blah, 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 right? Like those are the questions, right? And then you have the associated metric. What are you going to track in order to be able to get there, right? Now, when you have a conversation with your development team, with your management team, with, with your product team, whoever it is, you have a very limited set of things that have a reason to be there and a link directly to that reason. 
So that's your metrics. That's the interesting bit. Um, so Max, I have a little exercise, but in my book, we've got like four minutes left. So, yeah, right, right. <laughs> so what I did was I, I put it that we have questions if you have questions. And other than that, if you want, I mean, I have this like, go and figure out a GQM for, for wherever you are, right? If that's, if you are sitting in a situation and you want to create your own metrics, roll your own, so to speak, use the GQM. That would be helpful. Yes. And I think what we could do is, you know, stop the recording on sure. time and everything. If people want to stay a little bit longer, it's up to them and stuff, but uh, might have time for a question or two. If okay. you're done. I'm, well, I'm relying all, on you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, first of all, a round of applause for Pamela. I really enjoyed this <laughs> and talking about this all day long is something I could definitely do. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so passionate about it. And uh, I think earlier on in the chat, Morgan, who is here on the call, and I, we work together at a company. There's no need to drop names and stuff, but we had a scenario where we were trying to lead an agile transformation with a lot of leaders also involved in going to agile leadership training and all of that. And I can still remember the instance when I knew it was all over, it was not gonna happen, okay? Is when after months, our vice president, because he had a bad meeting with the business or whatever the case may be, was like, that does it. From now on, we want in Microsoft TFS, which was the tool that we used at that point, <laughs> we want every single story documented for the whole year it was like november and so the goal was for the next year starting january 1st have every single story from january to december and i in that instance just looked at the vp and told him do you understand what that means that we have to do every single story like that means detailing out every single thing that we're going to do a waste. for 300 it's huge amounts of waste it's, yeah. way, it's so much waste that i was trying to convey the waste the uselessness of it the lack of value there. but you know what he says no that's what we're going to do and at that point i was like that's the that's the straw that broke the camel's back this yeah, yeah that was it they, and i think but, that's if if i look at transformations part of the real issue is keeping those people on board it, it, the, the amount of coaching that I have had to do with the leaders and basically say, your reaction is to do this and it's the wrong one, right? It's, it's, it's counterproductive and this is a better reaction. I mean, I literally got to the point where I, I gave people templates for meetings so that they would ask questions as opposed to dictate. Yeah. But Pamela, <laughs> do you okay. know what actually hurt the most was not just that that I heard that I just said, was that all the directors that had come to Agile leadership training with us that were on board and understood the flaw in that approach said nothing. He was a vice president. There were all those directors. They said nothing. Call it psychological safety or lack of or whatever the case may be. But when, you know, people cannot even stand up and say, hold on a second, let's have a conversation about it or something. It's, like, it's, it's, it's flawed. It's a Big, big problem. It's a big, it's a big problem. And I, and I think there are many, many organizations that go through it. And it, I, I think the only thing that I, I think is kind of fun is, and this is a leading agile story, which they, I think they tell other places where they had <clears throat> one organization that went from project to product. And, and the guy said, I can't believe it. We're only two months into the project and you're already telling me we're going to be late. He goes, normally you guys tell me like, halfway through or 90% through and he was complaining about it. And then his kind of like the light bulb went on and says, Oh, at least we know now. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, I mean, it took a second or two to say it yes. out loud and then for it to click and stuff like that. Yes. It was, uh, it was hilarious. It was hilarious. <laughs> oh, Pamela, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> I just, I just wanted to say, I put in the chat, the link for the next, May 3rd leaders SIG for Agile Austin. Feel free if you've not yet signed on to it. And uh, I just like to say, feel free to stay on for a little bit of time now, but 
we start on time, we end on time. So we are officially ending our leader sig for today. And thank you, Pamela, for being a phenomenal guest speaker here. So Thanks much so fun. much for having me, Max. So much fun. Let me stop the recording.